Good morning, it's Monday the 8th of June. Do you know this is our 23rd assembly together? Goodness me, that's rather a lot. Anyway, hope you're all keeping well. Let's start our act of worship. So, we meet as always in the name of God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. May the Lord be with you. Hmm, I'm not sure you're answering that as much as you used to. Anyway, we had a great story last week, didn't we? About Pentecost, when the Holy Spirit came down to earth and visited the disciples. We're going to do, learn a little bit more now about what the disciples did next. And you can find this in Acts, which is the New Testament, towards the end of the New Testament part of the Bible. Plenty of stories in there for you to read. And I was thinking, hmm, I wonder who would be interesting to learn about. And I've got some really good books. I've got one about Peter and Paul. And this one is a, it's a diary. It's written with pictures and, and little words and things. And I was thinking, that's really interesting. A diary is where we write things down of what we've done every day. And then maybe we can go back and look at them. My mum has written a diary for at least the last 50 years that I know of. And she goes back and she looks at things that make her feel happy. Sometimes there are things in there that make her feel sad. But always, every time she writes a diary, she puts three things in that she feels blessed for. She calls them her three special blessings. Usually it's family, good weather, food, the fact that she's not poorly, different things. But I wonder... If we look back in five, ten years, and if you've written a diary, what things might it say? Might it say all excited about not being at school today? And then maybe worried about friends, family, maybe missing school, excited to be returning to school. The time that you are living in is different than any other time. And this is just a little bit like Peter and Paul. This was a new adventure for them. Something brand new. Jesus had left, he's ascended into heaven, the Holy Spirit, the helper had been, and they were starting on something new. Something they'd never done before was to go out and spread the word of God. In your kind of living, well, I suppose a bit of an adventure now, in that it's all new, it's all different, and you've got new challenges to rise to. And that's really what Peter and Paul were doing. I'm going to put the diary down and read you the story from our, fam our children's Bible. One afternoon, Peter and John were going to the temple to pray. There were lots of different ways to the temple, many different gates. At the gate that Peter and John chose on this particular afternoon was the gate called Beautiful. What an amazing name for a gate. It was covered all over in bronze and shone brightly in the sun. Standing outside the gate, however, was someone who did not feel beautiful at all. He was a poor, sick man who couldn't walk. He'd never walked in his whole life. Not ever. So he sat there day after day, begging for what little money those passing by would give him. When Peter and John came near to the man, he reached out his hand. Can you spare some change, he said, hoping for something beautiful, like something shiny, gold or silver. But Peter had something even better in mind. I don't have anything like silver or gold, he said, but I can give you something even better than that. Well, you could imagine the man was sitting there thinking, hmm, silver and gold would be pretty good. I can give you, said Peter, the power of Jesus. That works in me. So by that power, I say to you, stand up, stand up and walk. Then Peter took the man's hand and right away, he wasn't sick anymore. He could feel the power in his feet and his ankles and his legs. So he stood up and he stood up and he began to walk. And that's not all. He followed Peter and John through the gates into the temple. And by that time, he wasn't just walking, he was leaping too, walking and leaping and praising God for what he'd done. 
the people saw him and were amazed. And there was only one word for what they saw in his eyes and in his face and in his dancing feet. And that was beautiful. I wonder if Peter went home that evening and wrote down his thoughts. I wonder what he said, what he felt. Did he feel powerful? Did he feel sad that Jesus wasn't there to help him? Or did he feel that by believing in something so strongly in God that he could make a difference? You know, you all can make a difference. You don't have to be able to make somebody stand up and walk who hasn't been able to walk before. But you can all make a difference behind how you act and how you are, what you say, what you do, in thought, in word and deed. But also in what you don't always say. Sometimes we do things by not actually doing them. Well, that sounds a bit strange, doesn't it? But your mum asks you to do something and you don't do it. And then your mum ends up doing that. And actually, what your behaviour has been hurtful because you didn't do something. Sometimes we just have to stop and think, what do we say? What do we do? How do we act? Peter showed us there really clearly that he believed in God so much that he helped someone else. Again, you can be disciples. You don't have to cure people. But you can be disciples, as I said, in how you behave how you think. You're already a lot of you showing that by sharing gifts, gifts of love with each other, friendship, helping out in our community. When we go carol singing, when we make collections for Kings Highway um, School in El Direct or elsewhere, you show that by your actions. You show that every day by being kind and being thoughtful. Just because you're not at school doesn't mean to say you don't have to do those things. Let us pray. Dear God, help us all to be disciples, to follow in Jesus' footsteps and to learn from Peter. Let's show our actions, that in our actions we show our faith, that we believe in God the Father and that we can be little things just can make a difference. We pray, God, as always, for the NHS staff and those who work in supermarkets and drive lorries and keep all our food on the shelves. We pray for those people who clean and cook and look after people in care homes. We pray for everybody who puts their life out there every day to help us. We pray for teachers and doctors and nurses. We also pray for anyone that you know or anyone who may be sick at this time. We pray that God will know their love. Pray for our school family in Eldoret. We are so grateful for the money that we have raised. It's paid for food and paid for wages and paid for plants and crops. Please, God, let's help to continue to be the good people you we are, to be the good people you know we are. Your disciples in our thoughts, our words, and our deeds. We ask this through Jesus' name. Amen. I'm delighted to tell you that we've raised over £1,300 uh, to send to our family in Kenya. And as you know, some of that money has already been sent and spent. If you've got any money left at home that you've raised from singing My Lighthouse, please just send it into school. Just drop into the office quickly, drop it in. Whatever you need to do, send an email, we can collect it. We're going to close the bank account soon. So we just need you to have all the money in so we can then send it. I thank you from the bottom of my heart. For my friend Cleo Fass, the teacher, head teacher at Kings Highway School, who sends his love and prayers and blessings to you. He thinks you're wonderful. You know what? So do I. Hope to see you soon. Still not sure what's happening with that, but as soon as I know, I'll let your parents know and then they can tell you. Don't worry about it. Don't get anxious about anything. Remember, you know where we are. Ring, telephone, same thing. <laughs> Email us. Try not to come down to school if you can help it. But maybe we might see a little bit more. Now a few things have changed. I hope you're all going to enjoy next week's sunshine. I hope you all went splashing out in the puddles. 
take care god bless and don't forget that great parade that we're going to have one day at a great big party see you soon bye